Uh, Ms. Barry, so good to see you again. Truly, it's an honor to talk to you, especially for this. The second this film was over, the first thing I thought was like, oh my God, I can't wait to see what you direct again. So please don't let this be the only thing that you direct because you're phenomenal. Thank you. Gosh, thank uh, you very much. I've got so many questions for you. Um, you know, now that you do have experience behind the camera, you know what it takes to pull off a film from the perspective of a filmmaker, which of your past films do you now see differently? Because you can look at them through the prism of a director. And are there any of your past movies that now you wish you'd actually just had the chance to direct? I would love to direct Catwoman. <laughs> if I can get a hold of that now, knowing what I know, having had this experience and um, reimagine that world the way I reimagined this story. This bruise was written for a white Irish Catholic, like 25 year old girl, and I got to reimagine it. I wish I could go back and reimagine Catwoman and, and redo that, have a redo on that. Is there anything specific that you would do? I would have Catwoman. Um, saving the world like most male superheroes do and not just saving women from their faces cracking off. You know, I would make the stakes um, a lot higher and um, I think make it more inclusive of both men and women. You know, so much of this movie, one of the things I love about it is this idea of climbing back into the ring after you've been counted out by people around you, standing back up when people think that you're gonna stay down. Was there ever a moment in your career where you felt like you had to fight to kind of metaphorically get back in the ring that you thought maybe people had counted you out, but you were gonna prove them wrong? I don't really know. I, I can't really um, determine if anybody counted me out, but I do know that I had feelings where I failed at something or something didn't turn out the way I had hoped it would turn out. And I realized that in those moments, I, ha I couldn't wallow in that disappointment, but I had to just, you know, keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep taking chances and risks. And, you know, that, you know, failing at something is a part of life. And it's certainly a part of this industry. You know, nobody has successes and hits every time out. But in those failures, you know, those are when our greatest lessons are actually learned. So they're actually really necessary. And it prepares you to succeed, which I think is obviously the point of why this film worked out so well and why it turned out so great. With everything that you've learned as a director with this film, all the new perspectives that you have going on in your head, what's the most important thing that you learned behind the camera that you really wish you had known as an actor earlier in your career? Uh, I think many of the things that I, that I knew from behind the camera, I think I already knew. You know, and I think that's why I was ready to take on this new challenge. You know, I've always known that it's a director's medium, you know, that the movie is made in the edit, mm -hmm. that um, as an actor, you have to just show up and do the best you can do, you know, to service a character. And these were things that I found really um, useful on the other side. But I think I always knew that. I, I, I've always known that, actually. It's interesting because this movie clearly is made with someone who has a fundamental understanding of what makes great storytelling. Um, as we wrap up, it, it is hard to believe that next year is the 20th anniversary of your of your legendary and your historic Oscar win. And, and I've seen the, the clip dozens, if not hundreds of times. It's been viewed nearly, I think, six million times on YouTube. But I'm always curious, like, what is a what is a detail about that moment that we're not seeing when we watch it? Something that you remember that stands out to you that maybe we don't see whenever we're watching that clip? That I am totally having an out-of-body experience. I'm not conscious of even walking up those stairs. I'm not really conscious of what I'm saying. I'm completely on subconscious autopilot. I, none of that do I really remember. I only know I was there because I've seen the playback like the other 6 million people. <laughs> but I just, I, I just wasn't there. I was in such walking shock. It, it's one of my all-time favorite Oscar speeches. Like this, it sounds weird, but what, like how often do you watch? Like, do you ever like just pop it on just to watch it again? Um, I have, and I've especially, I've watched it with my daughter a few times. Um, sometimes people will, I'll be somewhere and somebody will show it to me and they'll be watching it. Um, so I have, I have visited it um, a few times. It's and to me, just, just to remember what the night was, because as I said, I don't remember it. Well, we all remember and we remember because we Thank love you. you. And I cannot tell you, it's always an honor to talk to you, but to talk to you for this film in particular, it, you're just a powerhouse behind the camera. And I truly do hope that I get to talk to you, not just again, but again, for a film that you direct. It's always an honor. Thank you. Really, Thank it's good you to see you much. again. Take care. Thank you. You too.
Going, we don't need roads. 